Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on dynamically filling a list box control on a user form in Excel. So I have here an Excel worksheet named data. I have a variable participants that has several participants listed and a variable education that I want to populate using a combination of list boxes. So this blue rectangle here, I click on this and I have a user form. You can see I have two list boxes. One's educational level and one is program. Now by default, you can see that the educational level list box is populated with four levels of education, associates through doctorate. But the program list box is empty. However, when I select one of the different degrees, the potential programs for that degree uh, come up in this list box. All right, so this second list box, this program list box, is being dynamically populated by the selection in the first list box. So say that you want to, for participant 1001, you want to select master's degree, you click on that, you click on clinical mental health counseling, or you can see the value comes up in this text box down here. So it's master's degree slash clinical mental health counseling. If I double click on this, it'll populate it into the worksheet and advance to the next row. And then say the next, uh, say 1002, has a doctorate in counselor education supervision. So you can keep populating it in that fashion. So fairly efficient, but it's based on the selection being made here affecting the row source for the second list box. I'm going to show you how I constructed this from the beginning. So before I move off this worksheet, I want to add another rectangle that will activate the new user form that I'm going to build. You see I have a blue one here that activates the main form. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, Select Rectangle, I'll put a rectangle in, and by default it's blue. I'm going to make this one orange. Next, over in the Storage tab, the other worksheet in this workbook, you can see the ranges that were used to populate those list boxes. You have the uh, degrees, and then you have all the different programs. Now, these are named ranges, uh, more specifically dynamic named ranges and you can find them in formulas, name manager, and say for educational level you can see that it uses uh, the offset function and the count a function so that this is uh, dynamic so if you add another degree onto the end of this the range will change to fit the size similarly if you were to take a degree off it would shrink to fit the size so it's a dynamic name range and these are already configured, these five ranges are already configured as dynamic name ranges. I have another video that covers how to create a dynamic name range. I wanted to show you here what ranges there are and where they're stored in the name manager. So I'm going to move back to the data worksheet and now to the code, which is Alt F11. So we will start in the code editor by adding a user form. So it's insert user form. And we want to create a way to open this user form. So go to sheet one, which is the data sheet. And you can see there's already a subroutine to open the main form. And we're going to do the same thing for this new form, except I'm going to call it open form two. and it's going to be user form one dot show because so I'm going to keep the default name for that user form and now that we've created the subroutine this is a good time to connect it to that orange button on the worksheet so just assign macro open form two click OK and now this will open the new user form uh, of course it's in the default setting right now. We're going to do a lot of work to it. But now that this is 
taken care of. You can open it right from the worksheet. So we'll move back to the code view and let's change some of the properties on the user form. So I'm going to leave the name, the object name as user form one as I mentioned, but I'm going to change the caption to main form two. I'm going to set the default font to Times New Roman 12. All this is from the properties menu here on the left. I'm going to change the back color from this uh, default gray to a dark blue. And now I want to place all the controls on this user form. So you might remember from the original user form that was green, uh, we have uh, two labels. So I'm going to put the first label in. Uh, the first one was educational level. So I'm going to change the four color to white and the caption to educational level. And the other label was program. So I'm just going to copy and paste the first label make this a little bit wider and I'm going to change the caption for this label which is label 2 to program we know we'll also need two list boxes you can find the list box on the first row of the toolbox dialog here so I'm going to put one under educational level and a second one under program. And of course I had a text box underneath, so I'll put that in here. So if we go back to the worksheet and we take a look the control, the uh, user form and all the controls on the user form uh, look correct. We compare them to the original here. So they're set up properly uh, now I just have to put the code in so that they'll function properly. Going back to code view. So before I put the code in, I need to change a property on the first list box, on list box one, as the row source property. And you might remember the dynamic name ranges. Uh, one was named educational level. So I'm going to put that in here, educational level this first list box is not dynamic, it's static, it's set to educational level and in this code view you can see uh, the four options appear. Uh, the second one is dynamic so it'll change based on what we select here. So, so now I'm going to write the code that will set the row source for list box 2. So that'll be a code behind the click for list box one. So just double click on list box one and this will come up as a subroutine. Of course it's empty to start with. And there's a few things we're going to need to do in this subroutine. First I want to declare a variable. I'm going to declare x as an integer. And I'm going to set x to equal the list index for list box one. So it'll be list box one dot list index. And now I'm going to use the select case method to set the row source of list box 2. So I'll start, start with select case x case is equal to 0. And then we'll have list box 2 dot row source, this is how you set the row source, equal to, and for this first item, so zero is the first item. So in a list box, the first item starts at zero, then moves to one. So for this first item, we know this is the associates degree. So the dynamic name range is associates degree. No spaces. And then we'll also need the K 
case for 1, 2, and 3. So I'm just going to copy this portion, which will allow me to create these other sections a little more quickly. So this will be cases 1. And everything else stays the same, except for we're going to change this to bachelor's degree. That's the name of the dynamic named range. So we'll move to the next case, which is cases 2, which is the third item. So I'll change the 0 to a 2, and we know that the uh, third item, or list index 2, is master's degree. And then, of course, moving to the last one, this is the fourth item, or cases 3. We know that was doctorate. Now, as we move down another row here, another line, we want to make sure we end select. And that'll complete this subroutine for list box one click. So now I'm going to add a subroutine that updates that text box that's down here. I'm going to do it by double clicking the list box. And this is list box two click. I'm going to start by declaring str as a string. This is a variable that we'll be using. And then I'm going to set str, the string, to equal to list box one text and with an ampersand and a quotation mark, a space, and a slash, another space and quotation mark, another ampersand, and then list box two.text. So this will combine the text from list box one and two separated by a slash. Then we'll set the text box one value to that string. So this takes care of updating the text box when the user clicks into list box 2. So next I'll write the code that actually places the combination of selections that this string here onto the worksheet. So down here it'll be list box 2 and instead of click it'll be double click. You see that creates an empty an empty subroutine here. And I'm going to copy and paste this because the same code will appear down here. So we'll start by declaring a string and we'll set the string to be the list box one text and then the slash and list box two text. I'm also going to declare a second variable, C, as a control. because we'll need that a little later on. So now I want the active cell on that Excel worksheet to be equal to the string. And that can be accomplished by active cell dot value equals str. I also want to move the active cell down one row uh, after I double click. So it's active cell dot offset one row zero columns dot select. The only remaining thing that needs to be done now for this user form to work as the first one 
uh, does is to set all the controls back to equaling nothing. Right? And you can do that individually. So you could say list box one dot value equals quotation mark quotation mark and do the same thing for list box two and the same thing for text box one. And for just the three controls being set back to nothing, that may be the easiest way to go. But I want to show you another way, because uh, oftentimes on these user forms, we have many more than just uh, three items we have to reset. Sometimes it could be 20 or 30. And having all that code uh, typed out one control at a time is not the most efficient way to do it. So I'm going to show you where you can loop through all the controls based on their type. So we'll start with a for statement. So it'll be for each C in me.controls. Remember, we declared C as a control up here. And before I go any further, I always like to put the end in, which is next C. Because if I don't, I'll forget uh, sometimes. So now we have the for next statement set up. It's just empty. There's nothing going on inside, but it's set up. And we're going to put an if statement in here. So this will be if type name of C equals, and this has to be in quotes, list box or type name C equals text box, also in quotes, then C, the control value, equals nothing. And we have to remember to end this statement, end if. So what this does is for each of the controls on the user form, it runs this if statement. If the type name is a list box or a text box, then it'll run this line of code, which is saying the value of that control to nothing. So that's the code we'll need. So let's see how this works on the worksheet. So we'll resume here where I left off at 1003. You can see this is what the original form looked like. And here's our new one. So I'll select bachelor's degree. And you see as I move through the different programs under bachelor's degree, it changes in the text block. But I have to double click one for it to populate onto the Excel worksheet. So now look at doctorate and counselor education supervision. and so on and so forth. So as you select the different items here, it dynamically populates this list box. And you can select these to see what it's going to look like. And then you double click to actually get it to populate on the worksheet. I hope you found this video on dynamically setting the row source of a list box to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, Feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.